Good evening. Good evening, guys. Good evening, teacher. How are you doing today, guys? Good evening, Christian, Wendy. How are you doing, guys, today? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Anna. How are you guys doing today? I really like the music, by the way. That's really, really nice. <laughs> Who's listening to that music? That sounds good. Wendy, okay, very good. Maybe you can share the playlist with us, Wendy. That sounds really good. Okay, guys, so how is your day going today? How are you doing? Just wanna say that I'm really happy to be with you guys today. Uh, I will be with you guys for this class and most likely I will be with you guys for the rest of this month because I think that there is something that happened with your teacher. So most likely I will have to be with you guys from today forward. So, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. We need to wait just a little bit more and see what they have to say. So, <clears> okay. <throat> hey, so, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo han estado, guys? Cuéntenme. Eh, me siento... Eh, contento de estar acá con ustedes. Eh, les estaba mencionando que yo voy a estar desde ahora con ustedes. Eh, vamos a ver. ¿Qué está? Vamos a ver. Ok. Bueno, este, como les estaban mencionando por ahí en el grupo, eh, el profesor Rubén Santos pues ha tenido algunos problemas, ¿verdad? Y por esa razón es que yo voy a estar con ustedes a partir del día de ahora. Así que espero, guys, que podamos estar trabajando, que podamos retomar, ¿verdad? Lo que él ha estado trabajando con ustedes. Y pues de mi parte, pues yo estoy en toda la disponibilidad de poder ayudarles en todo lo que esté a mi alcance, ¿de acuerdo? Good evening, guys. How are you doing today? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Hello, Ricardo. I'm fine. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. How's your day going today, guys? How is everything going? Is everything going fine? Are you tired? Did you have dinner? For me, it's fine. Please. Very good. Very good, Anna. Really happy to hear that. How yeah, about you, Because Ricardo? it's Friday. Yeah, that is an excellent... <laughs> That, that's just perfect, right? I love Friday because then we have the weekend and that is the best part of the week, in my opinion, because we have time so we can yes. do whatever we want to. So that's really good. Yes, it is. Yes, <laughs> very nice, very nice. So what do you usually do on, on the weekend, Anna? Do you do anything in a specific, like maybe just uh, stay at home or maybe you go out with the family or something like that? Mm -hmm. The, in some case, I go out with my family, we go on to the beach or another part. Okay. Mm, but I prefer staying home, watch TV, movies, sleeping. Yes, that's very nice. I like it. Yes. Yeah. I love to stay at home too and I love to watch TV and, and things like that. So that's really good. That's really good. Yeah, I think it's more relaxed. Yes, especially if you have to work all the week, then sometimes it's just better to stay at home during the weekend so you can just get some rest. Uh, please bear with me just for a second, guys. I need to do something here really quick, okay? Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna fix this. Okay, so I think. Okay, so I think that now we should be fine. Just want to make sure that we have a good connection, guys. So, 
we don't get disconnected or something like that, okay? And good evening for the ones who just joined the session. Thank you so much for coming, guys. Okay, there we go. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Angel. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm fine, I think. Very good. Yeah. Um, I'm really good. Thank you so much for asking. I'm just, uh, uh, just like Anna said, I'm really happy because tomorrow is Saturday, so I really love the fact that tomorrow is Saturday, we can do whatever we want to, so that's good. It's free. <laughs> yes, yes, we have off tomorrow. I think that probably most of us we have off tomorrow, so that's uh, something really good. Okay. <clears throat> bueno. Creo que ya casi vamos a comenzar, guys. Creo que ya estamos la mayoría. Bienvenidos, Carlos, Maritza. Bienvenidos, guys. Good evening, teacher. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo están, guys? Un gusto verlos nuevamente por acá. Thank you, teacher. Bueno. Que ya vamos a comenzar. Me gustaría presentarme en primer lugar. Así que les voy a compartir la presentación en unos instantes por acá. Veamos. Creo que algunos compañeros están teniendo errores con la presentación, con la sesión. Vamos a ver. Les voy a compartir. Veamos. Un momento, guys. I'm just trying to share the the link for the uh, the, the classmate because it looks like they have they are having difficulties getting into the session. So I'm just trying to send the link one more time. So please bear with me. Okay. Gonna okay. There we go. All right, so guys, uh, well, good evening to everybody. I'm going to share the presentation with you guys. Uh, I would like to introduce myself. That's the first thing that I would like to do. So welcome everybody. I think that probably, I think that we are almost done. Let's see. Okay, una pregunta, guys. ¿Cuántos son ustedes? ¿De cuánto es aproximadamente el grupo? Veo que estamos 14 en este momento. No sé cuánto. Good evening, Boris. 20, I think. 20? 20. 20 or more. Around 20. 20 or more. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so maybe we can start. Let's see. Okay, so well, uh, well, welcome guys. Uh, I think that we can start. So um, I would like to introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Gadiel Guidos, that's my name. Uh, well, I'm 28 years old, um, industrial engineer. Okay, thank you Alejandro, so we are 23, very good. Okay, I am industrial engineer. Well, I have been working with Inglés Corporativo for uh, I think probably four months, I think. And I know some of you guys because I have I, I have seen some of you guys in the previous levels like Carlos or Maritza. So like I was saying before at the beginning of the class, uh, I'm going to work with you guys for the rest of this uh, level for the rest of the month because it seems like something happened. Uh, there was uh, some situation going on with your previous teacher. So I will be with you guys for the rest of the month, okay? All right, so... I was checking the information and I was checking the classes that you had before. And I can see that you guys are working with the present perfect. Is that correct? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yesterday, yes. talk about uh, 
simple present versus present perfect. Okay. Yeah, so you guys simple were- Simple past. Simple Sorry, past. simple past. The simple past, right. Okay, so what can you tell me about that? Uh, what can you tell me about the simple past and about the present perfect? Anyone that would like to participate, what can you say about the simple past? When do we use it? How does it work? Uh, simple, simple past, use it when the time, a specific time. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the present perfect is a general time, it's not a finally. Very good, very good, okay. So simple past is when uh, something happened in the past and there is a specific time for that, okay? Like for example, we say yesterday I played soccer, okay? That is something that happened at, at a specific time, the day before uh, today, right? So there is uh, a definite time in this case. All right, so we're going to talk about these a little bit more, uh, just so I can be on the same page that all of you guys are. I just want to make sure that we have the same information. Entonces, uh, well, we're going to start, guys, with the objective. So we're going to practice asking and answering questions using the present perfect in uh, the simple past tense, okay? And so we can be able to describe uh, past experiences experiences by responding in both the present perfect and simple past. All right, so this is not really important. I just wanted to show you guys uh, this, but this is not really important. You don't need to write it down or anything like that. <clears throat> okay, entonces, como estábamos hablando hace un instante, eh, muy bien y muchas gracias a, a quienes estaban comentando, el pasado simple lo utilizamos cuando estamos hablando de algo que sucedió en el pasado en un momento específico. ¿De acuerdo? Y el presente perfecto, ¿cuándo lo utilizamos? A ver. Other idea about the simple, simple, simple pass is that the action is finished. The action is finished. Yes. 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 That is correct. Thank you, Alejandro. Yes. Eh, como en el ejemplo, ¿verdad? Eh, estábamos diciendo que yo jugué fútbol el día de ayer. Entonces, sucedió en el pasado y ya terminó. ¿De acuerdo? Luego, cuando, ten, cuando hablamos del presente perfecto, eh, sucede algo diferente. Cuando hablamos del presente perfecto, estamos hablando de una situación que empezó en el pasado y que probablemente incluso tiene una conexión con el presente. ¿Ok? So, we have like a little uh, definition here. And it says, uh, the present perfect is used when you want to talk about an action uh, when time is not important or time is not specified or the action has not really finished happening. Okay, entonces estamos diciendo que la acción comenzó en el pasado. No estamos especificando el tiempo no es, no, o no es importante. Y la acción probablemente todavía tiene conexión con el presente. Okay. Uh, we have some uh, examples here. So the example number one, it says, I have worked hard today. Okay, he trabajado duro el día de ahora. So what happens in this case? Okay, so I started working uh, today in the morning, for example. I, I am working hard at this point and probably I will continue working hard for the rest of the day, okay? So as you can see in this case, uh, we are saying that something started uh, in the past, some point uh, before the present time, and it has a connection to this uh, present time right now. Okay, entonces guys, básicamente es el presente perfecto, lo usamos para hablar de algo que empezó en el pasado y que probablemente eh, tiene conexión con el presente, ¿de acuerdo? Yo he trabajado muy duro el día de ahora. Entonces, empecé el día de ahora probablemente temprano a trabajar y todavía estoy trabajando. Okay? All right, so we have example number two. 
And he says, I have learned a lot of new English vocabulary. Ok, entonces, como ustedes pueden ver, nuevamente no estamos diciendo cuándo comenzó. No es importante el tiempo, a diferencia del el presente, el pasado simple, en el cual nosotros especificábamos en qué momento sucedió la acción. En este caso, simplemente estoy diciendo que en el pasado yo aprendí algo y que todavía tiene una conexión con el presente. Ok, so I have learned a lot of English vocabulary. Ok, somewhere in the past. I'm not saying exactly when it happened, but it's something that happened in the past and it has a connection with the future. Ok, so we're going to see just a few more things. So then we can practice, okay? I want you guys to practice. That's really important for me. Let me see. Give me just a second, guys. I can see that some of the, some of your classmates have not been able to access to the class yet. So let me see. After that doesn't, nothing happens. Permítame solo un instante, guys. Parece que los compañeros no pueden ingresar. No sé si alguien tal vez tenga algún tip. Alguien yo que. Tuve... Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yo tuve el problema también, pero yo me metí en el, en el correo. Yo sí me estoy metiendo por el correo. Yo no por el link que me mandaron en WhatsApp, porque eso no funciona. Ok. Teacher. Yes. Teacher, el link que usted mandó por el WhatsApp es, está sencillo. Este, Dios solo le manda el mensaje al correo y ahí entra uno de un solo. Oh, okay. Okay, very good. Yes, thank you guys. I really appreciate that because it seems like some of the classmates haven't been able to access yet. Vamos a mandar de otra forma por acá por si acaso, ¿verdad? Vamos a mandar el código y todo. Just a second, guys. Please bear with me. Le voy a mandar, creo que por acá, el, el ID. Tal vez funciona para los que están teniendo problemas todavía. Just in case. Just in case. All right. So, well, uh, thank you, guys. Thank you for your patience. So, we're going to continue. All right. So, the next part that we are going to uh, check today is how to conjugate the word, the, uh, the verb. Okay. So, the conjugation is the following. Okay, so we're going, we're going to take the subject, okay? Whatever the subject is, it can be a pronoun like this. I, you, he, she, and they, okay? Those are the pronouns. Like I can imagine that you guys already know what a pronoun is. Okay, so it can be something like this or it can be also a name. I'm sorry about that. It can be, for example, a name like Carlos has uh, well, in this case, Carlos has called. All right, so uh, we're going to use the verb have, and then we're going to put the verb into the past participle, okay? Uh, as you guys may know, the verb has basically three forms, okay? We have the base form, like in this case, call, like this. This is the base form. And then if we want to change it to the past, for regular verbs, we just add ed at the end, okay? Just like this. So called, this would be the past, okay? And then we also have the past participle, okay? Es como cuando nosotros decimos en español, eh, tenemos el verbo, eh, llamar, luego en pasado, llamé. Y luego si lo queremos decir, el equivalente del present perfect sería yo he llamado. Ese tipo de verbos que terminan de esa forma. ¿Ok? Entonces, esas serían las tres formas de los verbos que nosotros utilizamos acá en inglés. 
Entonces, para formar el presente perfecto, nosotros tomamos nuestro sujeto, I, then the verb have, y luego el verbo en participio. Que sería... Entonces, eh, yo con, eso, con este código entré también y me manda a otra clase. Ok, so I can see still having problems. So sorry, guys. Good evening. Yanira, good evening. Ok, parece que todavía están teniendo problemas, guys. Sorry about that. Let's see. Really apologize, guys, for the inconvenience. It seems like we're still having problems. Teacher. Yes. Es que fíjese que ha cambiado la forma para ingresar a, a, a la clase. Porque eh, yo antes solo le hacía clic al link que nos mandaron. Mm -hmm. Y automáticamente me mandaba a, a, al Zoom Meeting. Mm -hmm. Pero ahora le doy clic al link y, sí. me, y, me, y me dice registrar con, con correo y nombre y todo. Uh -huh. Y después me manda una, 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 un mensaje que dice que ha este, registrado correctamente. Sí. Y, me manda, y me manda ese mensaje que me, me envió un, un correo, no, un link al correo. Uh -huh. Entonces tengo que volver a entrar a mi correo. Y desde ese link, darle este clic para poder ingresar. Ok. Good evening, okay. teacher. Thank you. Good evening. I am Katia. Eh, lo que dice el compañero es cierto, pero a mí me sale de diferente forma. Yo me he metido veces a este mismo enlace y me mandó a otras clases. Ok. Me mandó a otras clases y yo solo me puedo meter enlazar por medio de Facebook de ahí ni, ni por el correo ni por otra cosa solo por Facebook me deja entrar entiendo okay well thank you for sharing I'm sorry about the about the situation Kathy I'm sorry about that and thank you for sharing thank you for letting us know what happened with you uh, maybe the other classmates can try to do something like that maybe what you try Maybe they can just uh, access using Facebook instead, okay? So we can... Okay, teacher. Yeah, thank you. Y bueno, quizás vamos a comentarles esa opción, ¿verdad? Los compañeros, para que tal vez lo entiendan de esa forma también. Creo que le está dando problemas. Que por acá creo que acaban de enviar... Veamos. Y, y están entrando con el enlace que nos mandaron la primera vez. Sí, con ese mismo, con ese mismo, porque yo no borro los mensajes. Y, y es el mismo que ellos están mandando ahí también a inglés corporativo. Y me acuerdo que antier o ayer que tenían ese problema, varios dijeron que los mandaba a otra clase también. Mm, okay. Y la aplicación no la tienen descargada de Zoom. Yo sí, yo sí, y yo, ah, yo actualizo hace, todo. O sea. Hace como una semana pidió la actualización porque a mí se me actualizó. Y tuve problemas para ingresar la primera vez. Pero, las, pero, para, pero me, me salió como que me necesitaba registrar nuevamente. Uh -huh. Lo hice y no, me ingres, no ingresé a la clase. Así que me salí y volví a ingresar con, la, con el código de invitación que, te mandan, que nos mandaron al uh -huh. WhatsApp. Y desde entonces así he logrado ingresar sin problema. Ajá, pero hoy es la primera vez que me pasó eso de, de porque ya me ha pasado, toda la semana me ha estado pasando. Y cabal, cuando me dice que me enlace por Facebook, ahí sí me puedo enlazar. Lo único malo de por Facebook es que como aquí nos piden el nombre completo, ¿verdad? Sí, sí. Y, y yo ah, ahí no lo puedo modificar. Ok. Uh -huh. no. Ahí sí. Yo, yo tuve también varios problemas, me tuve que registrar un montón de veces porque sí, no me dejaba registrar y una vez, dos veces, tres veces me mandaba el correo hasta que al final me mandó la clase y no pude ingresar. Eso fue ayer. Qué malo, de verdad. Debería Quizás deberían de probar entrar en el enlace que mandaron no. después a WhatsApp. 
No, es que con ese también volví a entrar ahora, o sea, con toditos los que han mandado, y me mandaba otra clase de una muchacha colocha. <risa> y no me escuchaban, porque yo decía que qué modo es. Y yo el de sí mismo. Me pasó a mí ayer, eh, a otra clase, me llama Belín. Ok. <risa> bueno, de verdad que, que lamentable, ¿verdad? Toda la situación y Gracias, guys, por compartir sus experiencias, de verdad. Pues todas estas experiencias creo que nos ayudan a saber buscar opciones, ¿verdad? Cómo solucionarlo. Así que es, creo que en parte es también la plataforma que ha estado como dando problemas, ¿verdad? Como dicen, desde que se actualizó, parece como que está un poco más complicado. Fíjese que sí, teacher, porque yo antes solo le daba el enlace y de un solo me metía. Sí, no, correcto. No, me, no tenía ese problema. Correcto, así solía ser, prácticamente solo darle clic al enlace y ya, listo, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Sí. Exacto. Bueno, no sé si ya, creo que ya la mayoría ingresamos, parece. Vamos a ver si continuamos. Ya, yeah, I think that we are basically complete. It seems like we are 22. You guys said that we are about 23 participants, so I think that we should be fine. Mm. Okay, guys, so, um, all right, so we were talking about how to, uh, the conjugation for these um, uh, tense, the present perfect tense. So basically it's the same thing with other tenses, okay? We have, uh, we have in this case, the singular form like I, then we have the plural like they, we, okay? For those we're going to use have, like I have, she has, they, I'm, I'm sorry, I have, they have, we have, okay? For those, we're going to use have. That's going to be the structure. And also for you, you have. So what happens when it is a third person, like he, she, or it? In that case, we're going to use has instead. Like Carlos has called, he has called, okay? So basically the same thing probably you may be familiar with this because it's basically the same structure that you use with other tenses. Okay, you change it when it is a third person, like he, she, or it. Okay, entonces, eh, luego guys, tenemos por acá la parte de las contracciones, cómo se hace la contracción de este, este tense. Eh, acá tenemos que cuando sea have called, like for I have called, you have called, they have called, right? In that case, we're going to, the contraction is going to be like this, okay? We're going to add the apostrophe, then V, as in Victor, E, called, okay? So like, I've called, I've called, I've, you called, okay? How, how do you pronounce, teacher? Excuse me. Teacher, I don't, I can't see the screen. Sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. Let me move this. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see it better now. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. How do you pronounce the, the, the B? Yes. Yeah. It's like, um, it's just like a little V sound at the end. It's like I've called, you called. Okay. You just need to add like this B sound at the end. You normally say just you called, but you've called. I've called. It's, um, it's really, you can really barely notice the difference. It's like not really big difference, but it's just a B sound at the end. Like I've called, you've called. I'm trying to exaggerate a little bit so you can hear like the B sound at the end. Okay, eh, básicamente tenemos que intentar como decir eh, el sonido de B al final. Ok, decimos you, como normalmente lo decimos, pero al, al final vamos a agregar el sonido de la B, como you've called, I've called. Requiere práctica, la verdad, pero simplemente traten como de colocar eh, eh, unidos los labios al final. I've called, you've called, they've called. Okay. 
Okay. No sé si eh, me, doy a, me doy a entender con esta parte, guys. No quiero confundirlos más, la verdad. Yes, teacher. It's okay. Yes, teacher. All right. Thank you, guys. Yes. I just want to make sure that we can understand, okay? Because it's a little bit tricky. It, it was hard for me at the beginning, but then uh, with practice, you can, you can improve, okay? So what happens when we have a third person, like he, she, or it? In that case... It's similar, okay? The apostrophe, S, and then the verb. Like, for example, okay, let me just go back. She is cold, okay? She is cold. She is cold today. She is cold yesterday. Three times. Okay? So in that case, we, we are saying that Ella ha llamado ayer tres veces. Okay. Simplemente en este caso vamos a hacer el sonido de la S al final. Y es para las terceras personas, como he, she, o it. Okay. So, en este caso, si no fuera eh, she, sino que fuera he en lugar, sería he is called. Es bien, se, se ve exactamente igual como cuando estamos haciendo una oración en presente. ¿Ok? Es como cuando hacemos una oración del tipo, he is a student, for example. ¿Ok? De, se lo voy a cambiar acá. Espero que, no los, espero que no tengamos una confusión, pero acá lo vamos a cambiar. Eh, es exactamente igual que como cuando ustedes dicen, él es un doctor, por ejemplo. He is a doctor. Okay? It's the same thing, but in this case, what is going to tell you what kind of tense you are using is going to be the verb, okay? In this case, it's going to be, this is the verb to be, just the present, but if you have he is called, in that case, we are talking about the present perfect. So that is the different, the verb. Okay, no sé si estamos claros con esta parte, guys. Una pregunta, una duda, any questions, concerns about this, guys? Anything that you would like to say? No, teacher. No questions. Okay, thank teacher, you. Teacher, I think that in this part, uh, the most important is uh, to know that the verb is in, is in past. That's true. Yes, the most important thing is that uh, we're going to use the the verb in the past participle, okay? Just we need to keep that in mind because it's not just the past, but it's the past participle. Okay, eh, bueno, entonces ya... Teacher, mm -hmm. can you repeat how do you say in the first sentence, how call it? Yes, yes, of course, yes. I, yes, so you're going to say uh, something like jupe cold. It's like, you just need to add like a B sound at the end, okay? You say, you, you called. It's really, uh, you can hardly hear the sound, but it is there. It's like a B sound at the end. You called. I called. Creo que quizás por el momento nos vamos a... Nos vamos a pegar a la parte normal. No vamos a estar utilizando las contracciones, pero solamente se las quería eh, presentar para que ustedes las puedan conocer. Y esto es algo que se utiliza más que todo cuando la gente está hablando. Es, es bien raro que cuando las personas están comunicándose a través de una conversación, que utilicen la otra, la otra forma. Por lo general es así, eh, una contracción. Y lo que nos va a decir que es lo que nos... Eh, el sentido de la oración siempre va a ser el contexto, el verbo y así, de esta manera. Que ya vamos a ver un poco más para que podamos identificar en qué situaciones nos están hablando con el presente perfecto. Hay varios escenarios en los cuales se utiliza. Yo se los voy a mostrar. ¿Okay? No sé si me pude explicar Nadia o si todavía tiene preguntas con respecto a esto. Uh, yes, teacher, I, I understand. Very good. Thank you, Nadia. I appreciate that. All right, so we're going to move on, guys. Uh, well, we have some more examples here, like uh, 
in this case, uh, we have the contraction. Uh, she's met her new teacher. Okay. Ella ha conocido a su nuevo maestro, su nuevo profesor. ¿De acuerdo? Si ustedes se fijan, es lo que estaba mencionando anteriormente. She, in this case, the, the pronoun she, then the apostrophe, and then the letter S after that. Okay. She's met her new teacher. Ella ha conocido a su nuevo maestro. Lo cual equivale a esto. She has met her new teacher. Okay, just like this. All right, so then the next example that we have, it says they've called you multiple times with no response. Okay, ellos te han llamado múltiples veces sin respuesta. Okay, han intentado contactarse contigo, pero no, no te han podido eh, alcanzar. Okay. So they've called you multiple times with no response. They've called you. Okay. All right, so we're going to talk about this in a moment, guys. Okay, okay eh, bueno, y guys, eh, en, este, en este caso, pues tenemos, como anteriormente probablemente ya lo vieron, eh, tenemos los verbos regulares y tenemos verbos irregulares, ¿de acuerdo? Los verbos regulares solamente le cambiamos la forma agregando ED al final, en la mayoría. Pero, ¿qué pasa con los verbos irregulares? Eh, pues cambia su forma totalmente. Aquí tenemos unos ejemplos. We have be, then the, the simple past would be was, where, depending on the subject, okay? For example, if we have I or he, she, it, we're going to use was, was okay? Very good, very good, Ricardo, yes. So when are we going to use where? Okay. You, they, you, they, we. They, we. Very good. Very good, guys. That is correct. So they, we, you. Those are the subjects that we're going to use with the, the simple past where. Very good. Okay. And then we have the past participle. In this case, as you can see, they change completely. Okay. We have be, then was and where. And then the past participle is been, which is totally different, guys. And this is what happens with irregular verbs. Okay, we have the next example. It is come. It says come, came, and then the past participle is again come, right? Then uh, the third example, the verb do. Then do, the simple past is did, and then the past participle is done. Ok, solamente les quería mostrar, guys, algunos ejemplos acá. Eh, en este caso, sí vamos a respetar esa regla del de sujeto para el pasado simple. Eh, acá, cuando utilicemos was and where. Ya cuando lo utilizamos en el pasado participio, allí pues, se va a mantener igual para todos los sujetos. Ok, sin, que, sin excepción. Vamos a ver. Ok. Vamos a continuar. We're going to continue, guys. Ok, luego vamos a pasar a la parte de las preguntas. ¿Cómo formamos nosotros preguntas? Eh, igual que cualquier otro tipo de preguntas. Simplemente vamos a cambiar el orden, en este caso, del de sujeto con el verbo auxiliar. En este caso, nuestro verbo auxiliar es el verbo have o el verbo has. Ok, so what are we going to do in this case? We just have to change the position of the subject and the auxiliary verb. Okay, so in this case, we put uh, the auxiliary verb at the beginning, and then after that, we have the subject here. Okay, so in este caso, la oración sería, you have met them. You have met them. Yes. Pero si queremos hacer una pregunta, simplemente invertimos la posición, correcto? Entonces decimos, have you met them? Okay, and in this case, this is a yes, no question. Okay, and the answer is going to be yes, we have, or no, we haven't. I'm um, sorry, Eduardo, you can't see what I'm. Okay, so sorry, guys. Are you able? Are you guys able to see what uh, what is on the screen? Because it seems like Eduardo cannot see what I'm sharing at this time. So, are you able to see it, guys? 
Yes, I, yes, teacher. I see you, teacher. I, I see you. My case, I, 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 I can see the, the class. Mm -hmm. Let me try again, Eduardo. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, ¿qué es lo que ve en este momento, Eduardo? Usted dice que no puede verla. Eh, sí, lo veo a usted en un recuadro pequeño a la derecha, pero de ahí la pantalla oscura. Ok. No bueno, sé. está un poco extraño, la verdad, porque parece que todos los demás me pueden ver, ¿verdad? No sé si tal vez... Mm. Déjeme pintar acá también. Pruebe, pruebe en view. Envío la, el modo de, de ver la clase. Cambie la opción. Tal vez ahí. Bueno. Vamos a, vamos a continuar, guys. All right, so like I mentioned before, guys, we have different situations when we are going to use the present perfect, okay? So we have the situation number one. Okay, we have situation number one when the time of the action is not over, okay? So, and we have an example here that shows how this works. Okay, we have, uh, I have worked hard today. Okay, in this case, as you can see, this is something that started today somewhere in the past and the action is not over yet, okay? Which is basically the difference between the present perfect and also the simple past, which is what you guys told me before. So in this case, we are saying that this is something that started in the past, but it's not over yet, okay? Then example number two, I have been very busy this week, okay? The, the, the week is not over yet. I'm still working. And I'm saying that uh, during all of this time that started in the past until now, I am busy. And most likely I will be busy for the rest of the day or for the rest of the week, okay? So, vamos a ver por acá, guys. A ver, no sé si alguien me pudiera dar un ejemplo por aquí, guys. Vamos a practicar. Quiero que practiquen. Vamos. Vamos a preguntarle a alguien por acá. Quisiera que me digan al menos eh, tres cosas que ustedes han hecho. O sea, esta semana o como ustedes gusten. A ver. Vamos a elegir a alguien por acá entonces. Teacher. Yes. I have, por mí no se la voy a decir. I have, been, I have been run, run, run this weekend. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay, so you said I have been, and then? Run. Or running. Running, or run. okay. This weekend. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yes, uh, that's a good example. Thank okay. you. So yeah. Okay, teacher. Thank you so much. Yes, that is a good example. Okay. Um, You're welcome, teacher. This is a different form. In this case, this is the present perfect progressive. Okay, which is uh, we're basically talking about something that started in the past and it continues to happen. Okay, and it's an ongoing action in the present. But, but it's good, yes, it is good. Okay, eh, muy buen ejemplo, gracias. En este caso estamos hablando de otra forma similar a la que estamos estudiando. Eh, estamos hablando del presente perfecto continuo. Okay, la diferencia es de que acá tenemos el verbo, eh, este verbo adicional acá, el cual nos dice que es una acción que se está desarrollando todavía. ¿De acuerdo? I have gone to work. Okay. You have gone to work. Okay, teacher. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So, well, you can say things like this. Okay. So, I have, um, I have eaten fast food three times this week. 
or I have uh, I have gotten up from bed er earlier this week, things like that, okay? You can describe like situations that happened in the past. And you know, I have, I have, I have did exercise yesterday. I don't know. Okay, very good. So that's very good. So you're you're saying that you have done exercise. This okay. Week. Okay. Okay, teacher. We Thank you. You're welcome. We need to remember, guys, that we need to use the past participle, okay? Very good. We're not going to use the verb in the past form. We're going to use the past participle, like in this case, okay? We have the base form, then we have the simple past, and then we have the past participle. So we're going to use the past participle all the time. Yes, teacher. <laughs> okay. Thank <laughs> no, you. But, but you're good. You're good. No worries. You're good. Thank, Thank you, you so teacher. <laughs> okay. Eh, vamos a ver, por acá tenemos otros ejemplos. Nadia dice, I have gone to work. I have eaten pupusas this week. Okay, good. Very good. Any other example here? What have you done today, guys? Have you studied today? Have you gone to work, for example? A ver. Yes. I have been going to the church. Okay. You have been going to the church. Excellent. Very good. Vamos a ver por acá alguien más. Vamos a participar, ¿verdad? Ana Mendoza. Do you have any examples or do you have any questions about this? Maybe something that you can share with the class? Mm, no, nothing. Okay. You do it perfectly. <laughs> okay. So then in that case, uh, can you please uh, maybe... Give us an example about this, maybe. Um, maybe I have seen soap opera this week. You have seen, uh, I'm sorry, you said soap I have. Soap opera. Soap opera. Mm -hmm. Is it like this? I have seen soap opera. What? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the verb. I'm sorry, guys. Mm. I have seen. I have seen, very soap good. Opera. Very good. Yeah. So we are uh, yes. we're using this structure. Oh, I'm sorry. This week. This week, you said, right? Yes. Very good. All right. So we're using this this structure, guys. So we have the the subject, which is you know it can be a pronoun, it can also be a name, and we're using the verb have in this case, and then the verb in the past participle form. Okay. So, for example, we can say Maritza has studied this week. Okay, Maritza has, uh, let's say, studied this, this week. week. Yes, teacher. Okay. Very good. Yes, this really teacher. Very good, Maritza. Very good. Okay, so, como pueden ver, uh, tenemos la estructura. Okay, per perdón, Maritza. Uh, for example, can mm, I have been cooking every day in this week? Very good. Yes, very good. That's a good example too. Okay. So like I mentioned before, that's like a different structure, but that's good. That's still good. Okay, let's say... Ricardo says, I have cleaned my room. Very good, very good example, Ricardo. So basically Ricardo is saying that he cleaned his room, but in this case, he's not specifying the time when that happened. Okay, it's just like, it's something that happened in the past. Okay, then we have Alejandro says, I have done exercise this week. Okay, very good, yes, very good. Okay, vamos a ver. Ok, vamos a, entonces a continuar. Vamos a seguir viendo por acá otras situaciones, guys, donde vamos a utilizar esto. Ok, tenemos la situación número dos. Una algo que nos va a indicar, una señal que nos va a decir cuándo utilizar el presente perfecto, van a ser las palabras for, 
and since. Okay. So we have these uh, two examples here. It says, I have studied here for one year. Okay. For, then we say a time expression like this. So I have studied here for one month. For example, for one week. Okay. So that is an indication that you guys need to use the present perfect. Did you see something like this? For. Okay, I have studied for one year. Then we have the example number two. It says, she has worked with my brother since, since, okay, since she was 18 years old. Okay, so, so far we have two situations, guys. We have when the time of the action is not over, okay, situation number two, when we use the words for and since, okay. So I have studied here for one year. She has worked with my brother since she was 18 years old. Okay, le estamos diciendo, yo, yo he estudiado aquí por un año y en el otro caso estamos diciendo, eh, ella, ha, ella ha trabajado con mi hermano desde que tenía 18 años. Okay, ya una, una oración un poquito más, eh, más estructurada, ¿verdad? Ya no solamente la, la forma base. Okay, we're trying to combine two things in this case. We have two sentences. She has worked with my brother and then since she was 18 years old. All right. Let's see. A ver. Que ya lo veo con sueño, guys. Ya, ya casi nos vamos. <laughs> it's Friday, teacher. Yes, I know. Yeah. It's Friday, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In my brother knows. <laughs> That's right. It's Friday and the body knows it. That's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, guys. Yeah, por cierto, yo les quería preguntar, eh, esta semana, ¿siempre ustedes reciben clases hasta los viernes o solo es esta semana nada más? Only this week. Oh, Only this week. Una clase. I see. Okay. I see. Okay. Thank you, guys. So, what happened? Why, why are you having this class today? Did you miss one of the classes for some reason, or what happened? It's because um, uh, our teacher have problem. I see. So that is the reason why. Okay. I see. Thank you, Anna. Welcome, teacher. Okay, that's good, guys. We we're almost done. All right, so we have two situations so far. We're going to continue to the next one. Okay, I just want to explain you guys this uh, really quick. All right, so situation number three. Uh, when we are talking about an action that has repeated between the past and now. Okay, so. We have this example here. It says, I have visited the ER two times this year. Okay. Does anybody know what ER means? Emergency room. No, teacher. There we go. Alguien dijo algo por ahí. Vamos a ver. Emergency room. Excelente. Correcto. The emergency room. Oh, son como... Okay. Eh, en este caso, guys, bueno. Can eh... you repeat this, please? Yes, of course. Yes, so it says I have visited the ER two times this year. Así que esto es la sala de emergencias. Sería emergency. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Emergency room. Okay. Lo que sucede es de que en Estados Unidos utilizan bastante como acrónimos, por así decirlo, o este tipo de cosas, ¿verdad? Especialmente time cuando... Time is money. Yes, that's true, yeah. That's really important for them. They, yes. they tend to do things really fast because for them it's really important time. So, for example... Uh, 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 sorry, Boris. Go ahead. ASAP. Uh, a -A 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 ASAP, yes. 
ASAP. Very good. As soon as possible, okay? That is another expression, guys. Very good. So yes, they do use these kind of expressions like ASAP or ASAP. So I just wanted to share that with you. All right, so then we have the next uh, example. So it says, she has submitted the job application uh, three times so far, okay? Entonces, ella ha presentado la aplicación para el trabajo tres veces hasta ahora. So far. Okay, so we have other time expressions here, guys, that we're talking about. Entonces, como ustedes Excuse pueden me, ver... Peter, what, is, what, what is the meaning of uh, so far? Mm -hmm. Excelente. Muchas gracias, Alejandro. Sí, eh, so far es cuando usted está diciendo hasta ahora. Es como decir... Okay. It, I can say, for example, uh, do you have any questions so far? Yo le estoy preguntando si tiene preguntas hasta ahora. Okay. That's, that is the meaning. You're welcome. Yeah, so I just wanted to share uh, some of these expressions. Uh, these are really useful expressions sometimes. So I just wanted to bring them up so you guys can, you can be aware of this. All right, so we are almost done, guys, for today. So I don't know if you guys have any questions about this. I think that we are not going to finish today because there was more information that I wanted to share with you. But I guess that we are going to continue next week. Most likely. Okay. So I don't know if you guys. Okay, teacher. Okay, teacher. Okay, teacher. Yo creo que ya todos ya quieren ir a descansar más que todo, ¿verdad? Ya lo veo. The movies, teacher. To the movies, yes, that's fine. Yeah, that's right. In English, teacher. <laughs> eso, eso me gusta. Eso me gusta bastante porque siempre y cuando vayan a practicar, pues ahí con gusto, ¿verdad? Vayan ahí a escuchar películas o la novela o lo que sea en inglés, ¿verdad? Yes. Karaoke. Yes. <laughs> yes, let's go to the karaoke. That sounds good. Okay. Bueno. <laughs> Bueno, guys, eh, si no tienen preguntas hasta el momento, creo que vamos a salir temprano ahora por ser la última clase y por ser la primera clase que yo tengo con ustedes. Así que quizás vamos a salir temprano por ahora y pues los veo el día lunes, si no tienen ninguna pregunta. Okay, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thanks, teacher. Thanks, teacher. Thanks, teacher, for the class. You're welcome, guys. Have a good Thank evening, you, teacher. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night good everybody. Good night, everybody. Vayan a bailar. Vamos a bailar. Vamos a bailar. <laughs>